Moffett Road Railroad Museum recently preserved a Denver and Salt Lake Railroad crane. The unit was built in 1913 by Industrial Works, Bay City, Michigan, weighs 100 tons, and has a 120 ton lifting capacity. Originally capable of self-propulsion, its 39-foot boom was used to build structures, replace bridges, clear rock slides, and salvage derailments on the original Moffett Road Corona Pass route over the Continental Divide. When crews needed this crane at the site of a wreck, a telegraph was sent. Send the big hook! The boom car was so named because it always traveled adjacent to the crane and under its extended boom. It carried tools, spare track, and wheel sets for placement under derailed but still serviceable cars. A small cab contained jacks and cables needed on site. Inside of the crane's riveted steel cab, the crane operator kept a watchful eye on steam gauges while operating the steam valves and manual control levers. A coal-fired vertical boiler provided the steam used to operate the pistons, gears, sheaves, and hoisting cables. Imagine working in this confined space next to that boiler with a network of hot steam piping and exposed mechanical parts all around you. When the crane was dispatched to the site of a wreck, they remained on site as long as needed to clear the wreck and restore service to the line, day or night, in all weather conditions, making do with what they had to work with. According to Marv McCall, a former foreman on the Denver and Rio Grande, once you was out there, you was out there. But the crane was retired in about 1988 and languished in the Denver Burnham Yards. It was destined to be scrapped, and apparently all the gauges were removed. But the Moffat Road Railroad Museum determined that the crane would be saved. We need to save this crane. In order to move the crane, much work had to be done, including to get it to pass through the Moffat Tunnel. The boom needed to be lowered by another crane so that it could be secured to fit through all the tunnels between Denver and Winter Park. Brakes, bearings, and trucks were inspected and lubricated. All the loose items on the rotten decking of the boom car needed to be removed. The crane had been a key factor in maintaining the Continental Divide crossing at Corona Pass. For over 30 years, it was the centerpiece of work trains involved in cleaning up derailments and wrecks throughout the Denver and Salt Lake rail system. This crane is the most significant piece of maintenance away equipment that still exists from the small amount of remaining Denver and Salt Lake rolling stock. The Union Pacific provided assistance and dispatched three of their local power locomotives to start the move out from the Burnham Yards. This 1960s era Denver and Rio Grande Jeep type locomotive, still in its original orange and black Rio Grande speed lettering livery, also needed to be moved to its new home, the Forney Transportation Museum in Denver, where it will be preserved. This Denver and Rio Grande caboose was coupled to the Rio Grande Jeep as it too is destined for the Forney Transportation Museum. At long last, our crane is beginning its journey to our museum. The Union Pacific delivered the crane to a siding in Granby directly opposite our museum. The UP's preparations had worked and our crane had traveled well. We needed the services of Terry Crane and Rigging because there is no switch connecting our museum's tracks to the UP tracks. It took two of their cranes to lift our 100-ton crane up from the UP siding. 
working together very slowly, the two cranes soon had our crane up in the air. After the crane crew checked the rigging holding our crane, the Terry cranes slowly lifted it upwards. It then had to be slowly turned in order to align correctly with our track. This was no time for a false move. High precision coordination was needed between the crane operators. Both of the cranes needed to slowly pivot with our crane suspended while swinging in a light breeze so they could align our crane to be placed correctly onto our temporary track. Only then could it be lowered. Our crane was then carefully placed onto our track. The crane was now successfully on our track and between the two Terry cranes. Then the crane had to be rolled down the temporary track to make room for placing the boom car as well. Next, the boom car had to be pushed down the UP siding track to where the Terry cranes were ready to lift it. The boom car is much longer than our crane and required plenty of space while in the air so it could be slowly maneuvered and correctly lined up. Once again, careful placement was needed to set the boom car onto our track. The Terry cranes were now done. It was now easy for our small excavator to roll the boom car down our temporary track to be recoupled with the crane. Mission accomplished! Special thanks to the Union Pacific Railroad and Terry Crane and Rigging. Make plans to visit our museum in Granby, Colorado and see all of our artifacts. We are on the way to the Grand Lake entrance to Rocky Mountain National Park. We have a large O-gauge layout, and you can even ride the California Zephyr to come visit us. Thanks for watching our video.